In this video, we are going to start our section on Fourier series, and we'll start with the sine and cosine series. This is our overview slide, which we'll spend about five minutes or less on before we go over each topic with more details and more examples. We start with sine and cosine series. A general Fourier series expansion is a sum of potentially infinite number of sine and cosine terms. And we want this infinite sum of cosines of different frequencies and sines of different frequencies, plus a, uh, just a, a real number coefficient, to be equal to some function that we're trying to approximate with this sine and cosine series expansion. A couple of notes on notation. We have the frequency is this omega n is equal to 2 pi n over t naught where t naught is our period, and a function generated by a series of sines and cosines is periodic with periodicity, is that how you say it? With period of t naught. And so the idea is s of t will be equal to s of t plus t naught. This is our period. Typically, we're given a particular function f of t, and we want to determine both t naught and the a n's the coefficient a n's and the coefficient b n's in front of the different frequencies of sines and cosines so that the series is equal to f of t for all t. For this to be possible, f of t must be periodic and exist for all t, so that f of t is equal to f of t plus t naught. If f of t is not periodic, we can make the series equal to f of t over some finite interval. We have these orthogonal conditions which will become important when we're trying to evaluate these coefficients for our sine and cosine series. First, if we integrate a sine times a cosine, this will equal to zero. Second, if we integrate a sine of a frequency that's different from a sine of a different frequency, that will be the Kronecker delta mn times t naught zero. So in other words, when we integrate two sines of different frequencies will get zero. If they're the same frequency, we will get one times t naught over two. Similarly, for cosine, if they're different frequencies, when we integrate, we will get zero, but when they are the same, we will get one times t naught over two. The idea here is that the sines and cosines of different frequencies form an orthogonal basis. So if you recall from orthogonal bases, their inner product is zero if m is not equal to n. And so here, the inner product of functions is defined to be the integral. So here the inner product of the two different bases, because they're different, sine and cosine, they'll equal to zero. Here, if the, sine and, if the two sines are different um, frequencies, they're considered different basis elements, so they'll be zero. But when it's the same basis, it'll be equal to 1. We have this t naught over 2. Similarly for cosine. We will use orthogonality to get these formulas for our coefficients. So this is our Fourier series. Our formula for a naught is given here. Formula for the mth coefficient of your cosines is given here. And a formula for your m the coefficient of your sines is given by b sub m. That is it for our overview, so we're going to go back and talk a little bit about sines and cosine series in general. Our Fourier series expansion is a representation of a function, here we call it s of t, which we use some coefficient, a, a real number, plus a possibly infinite number of sine and cosines of different frequencies that we add together. For frequency, we have this omega n, which is 2 pi n over t naught, where t naught is our period, and the period is where our series is periodic with period of t naught. So s of t is equal to s t plus t naught. So when we add t naught to t, we're back at the same value of s of t. Here I have an example of a periodic function. Its period is t naught, which is approximately from here to here. And then you can see it repeats. Also, if I take an arbitrary, let's say, small t naught here, 
and then I move over from T naught to my period, this value should be equal to the same value over here. And that's essentially what this formula over here says, that my S of T, my function evaluated at T, should be equal to my S evaluated at T plus my period T naught. So these two should be about the same if I had measured everything correctly. Typically for a Fourier series problem, we're given a particular function f of t and we want to determine the t naught, the period, and our coefficients, the a sub n and the b sub n coefficients in front of these different frequencies of sine and cosine so that the series is equal to f of t. For this to be possible, f of t must be periodic and exist for all t. In other words, f of t must satisfy this periodicity condition here equals f of t plus t naught. And that's because we're trying to represent this function with periodic functions, sines and cosines. The smallest value of the constant t naught that satisfies this periodicity, f of t equals f of t plus t naught, is defined as the period of f of t. Certainly any multiple of t naught will satisfy, any integer multiple of t naught will satisfy this equation. So we want the smallest one to define our period. If f of t is not periodic, a Fourier series cannot be used to represent f of t for all t. We can, however, make the series equal to f of t over a small finite interval. So if this is our function f of t, you can see there's nothing that kind of repeats. But we can take this small interval t1 to t2, and we can make this portion, then we can extend this function so that it's periodic and looks like this. The next thing we're going to talk about is the orthogonal conditions. What we are claiming is we can represent an arbitrary function s of t by adding up a series of sines and cosines. So we take cosines of different frequencies, multiply them by some scalar multiple, sum them up, and then add that to different frequencies of sine that we scale by a multiple of bn, and add these all together, plus perhaps a coefficient over here, a scalar coefficient, and we can model any function, periodic function, s of t. And the reason why we can claim we can do this is because sines and cosines of different frequencies, the set of them all together form a basis for periodic functions. In other words, we can create any periodic function with a linear combination of sines and cosines of different frequencies. And that way, we can understand signs, these sines and cosines of different frequencies as a basis. And not only is it a basis, it's an orthogonal basis. And from linear algebra, when we talked about orthogonality, the inner product of two uh, bases will be equal to zero if the bases are different elements. And it's equal to one when they are the same, when it's the same element, when it's inner product with itself. And the inner product for a function is the integral of the two functions. Since the sines and cosines are an orthogonal basis, when the sine is multiplied by a different basis element, and it's definitely different if it's a cosine, then it'll be zero because, again, your bases are orthogonal. If we have two sine functions, if they are different frequencies, so n does not equal to m, then these will be orthogonal and they'll be zero. If it's the same, if n is equal to m, this part here will equal to 1. And when we integrate over here, we'll see that it's equal to 1 times t naught over 2. So we use this delta, uh, Kronecker delta. So when m does not equal to n, it's 0. When m does equal to n, it's 1 times t naught over 2. Similarly for cosine, if we have the same frequency, we will get like n is equal to m. Where did the m go? There should be an m here. This will be our Kronecker delta t naught over 2. If n is not equal to m, then we will get 0. I do have a proof of the cosine, this, um, this part over here, 
but I saved it for the end of the video since we have a lot of other things to get through. So if you have time, it's a really good thing to have seen. And if you don't, then um, maybe you want to skip it. Our next topic is evaluating the coefficients. So we get formulas for our coefficients for our a sub n and our b sub n, and also for our a naught. And this is our formula. So if we have f of t is equal to an a naught over 2 plus sum from n equal 1 to infinity a n cosine omega n t plus sum from n equal 1 to infinity b n sine of omega n t, then our a naught is given by 2 over t naught integral from t naught plus uh, t naught to t naught plus capital T naught. So this is one uh, period dt of f of t. Our a sub m is equal to 2 over t naught integral from t naught to t naught plus, I should just say this is our period instead of capital T naught, cosine of omega m t f of t. Our b sub m is equal to 2 over our period, integral from t naught, t naught plus our period, sine of omega n t f of t. I do have a derivation for one of these formulas, the one for a sub n for the cosines, or is that a sub m for cosines? But I am, like the other proof, I'm going to save this for the end of the video. It's good to know, and it's based, it definitely uses orthogonality, but um, I think it's good for us to do some examples. You can take a look at the proof later if you have time. I have my notes here. This is what my Fourier series looks like. These are my formulas for my coefficient a0, am, bm, and just a little note what frequency is equal to with regard in relation to the period. So our first example is a pretty easy, straightforward one. It's to consider the expansion of f of t equals sine of t. And the first thing we'll note is our period is equal to 2 pi. So sine of t is equal to sine of t plus 2 pi, whatever you put in for t, this will always be true. And here using our formula for omega n, frequency is equal to 2 pi n over our period, which we said was 2 pi, so it's just equal to n. And to get sine of t from this formula, f of t equals a naught over 2 plus a summation of cosines and a summation of sine. Well, first of all, we don't need any cosines to model our sine, so we'll set, and we don't need this extra coefficient, so we'll set those equal to zero. We can set b1 equal to 1 and b0 for all n greater than 1. And what that will give us is f of t then is equal to b1 sine of omega 1 of t, which is equal to sine, looking at omega 1, well omega n is just equal to n, so that's just going to be 1 times t, which is sine of t. So that probably wasn't terribly surprising. Next, we have this graph, which we call the spectrum for f of t equals sine of t. And essentially what it is, is a, it's a histogram of the frequencies that is contained in our function. In this case, our function has only one frequency, that's sine of t. So here at the w1, the n equals 1 bin, we have all of our frequencies. No other frequencies have are represented by this function or contained in this function. Our next example is a periodic triangle waveform, and it's given by this f of triangle of t is equal to 2 little t over pi, for little t going between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, and then 2 minus 2 little t over pi, for little t going between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Maybe I'll call this t time. And this is what the triangle function looks like if we graph it. We can see that our period is equal to 2 pi. It repeats by the time we get through to 2 pi. And that means our frequency is 2 pi n over 2 pi, which is equal to n. Here I just kind of move down the formulas for my coefficients a0, am, and bm. Our book points out that f of t is an odd function. We can look at that here. And we're integrating symmetrically about the x equals 0 line, so that all of our a sub n, our even functions, should be equal to 0. 
It just so happens I did not notice this, so I did the work. So I did the integration. A naught is equal to 2 over my period, 2 pi, integrating from, and this is broken up into two sections. We start with negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, dt of 2t over pi plus, and now from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, dt 2 minus 2t two over pi. You can see I do the integration and I get 0 as my final answer. I started to do a sub m, but then it turned out to be quite a long integration, so I just said, you know what, I'm just going to use your book's little hint here. I will integrate out b sub m. Your book does have the solution for this, but it didn't show a lot of work, so I'm going to show you the integral in all its, all its detail. I'm going to start by using my formula for b sub m, which I'll underline in blue on top. So I have 2 over t naught, so 2 over my 2 pi, integral from, again we go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 dt, sine of nt, where's the rest of this, then f of t, so 2t over pi, plus, again, 2 over 2 pi, integral from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, dt, then sine of n of t times f of t. Here, f of t is 2 minus 2t two over pi. Over here, I canceled out the 2s. I have 1 over pi. I pulled out the 2 pi here, since it's just a constant. I kept my integral, and I'm left with this t times sine of nt dt, then I started working on this integral, and I separated it out into two integrals. First, I did the multiplication of sine times 2, and then next, a separate integral, I did the multiplication of sine times minus 2t over pi. So first, I did the 2 times sine of nt. So I have my, these two, the 2 on the numerator and denominator cancel, but I have this 2 multiplying my sine of 2 and t. I pulled it out, so I have 2 pi still. I have my integral sine of nt. Next, I did my sine of nt times minus 2t pi. Over here, I cancel out my 2s in the numerator and denominator, so I have, and I have this minus sign, so I have a minus 1 over pi, and I pulled out my 2 pi as well. I have my integral, and then I have this t left in front of the sine nt dt. The next thing I have is now I have this t sine of nt and this t sine of nt. They're actually the same integral. It's the limits of integration that are different. Even the coefficient's the same. Oh, except with the minus sign. But anyway, what I need to do is use integration by parts to integrate t sine of nt. I have my formula here to remind myself what integration by parts looks like. So if you integrate uv prime dx, you want that's equal to u times v minus v integral of v times u prime dx. So the idea is u is the formula that you can simplify. So in here, t sine of nt, I'm going to choose u to be t because when I take u prime, that simplifies to 1. When I take v prime equal to sine of nt, then v is going to be minus 1 over n cosine of nt. So you can see if I had chosen u, to be sine of nt, it wouldn't have simplified things when I did u prime, but taking u equals to t will simplify u prime to just 1. Anyway, using my formula now, I do u times v, so here's my u and here's my v, so I'm going to get minus t over n, and then my v, the rest of my v is cosine nt plus, and now the integral of v times u prime. u prime is 1, so just the integral of v. So that's, since it's a minus and this is a minus, I get a plus 1 over n cosine of nt. So my final answer is minus t over n cosine of nt plus, integrating this, I get 1 over n squared sine of nt, which now my bm is equal to, I have my 2 over pi squared. This integral here is equal to minus t over n cosine of nt plus 1 over n squared 
sine of nt evaluated at my minus pi over 2 up to pi over 2. Plus, this is just the integral of sine of nt, so I have my 2 pi. The integral of sine of nt is minus 1 over n cosine of nt evaluated at 3 pi over 2 and pi over 2. The minus, here I have my 2 pi squared. Again, I just plug in what I found here using integration by parts, minus t over n cosine of nt plus 1 over n squared sine of nt, 3 pi over 2, pi over 2. To make some room, I'm going to delete my integration by parts formulas, and you can see I had written it wrong at first. Anyway, and I'm going to move up my line here. And I did this, I tried to evaluate this all, and I kept... Uh, having problems, like with my negative signs, I kept dropping negative signs and getting confused what was in my parentheses, what I needed to multiply by. So I decided to do this little piece by little piece. So I'm going to do what's underlined in blue here, and I put the blue arrow. So I have 2 over pi squared integral. Now I'm going to, oh, this is where I get to evaluate pi over 2. So I plug in pi over 2 for t, and I get minus pi over 2n cosine of n times pi over 2 plus 1 over n squared sine of n times pi over 2. Okay, now I plug in my minus pi over 2, so I get, I think this might need to be a minus, but that bothers me because I already have my solution. But anyway, let's see where this goes. Let, um, I think it's a minus though. So I'll get pi over 2n cosine of minus n times pi over 2, and then my minus 1 over n squared sine of minus n pi over 2. Now I have a note that cosine is even, so we can ignore this negative sign. Here we have sine is odd, so we can take out the negative sign and put make this a plus. These two terms cancel out. These two terms add together, so we have 2 over pi squared plus now we have 2 over n squared sine of n pi over 2. Multiplying this out, we're going to get 4 over n squared pi squared sine of n pi over 2. And I'm looking at this, I think this here should have been a negative sign, which means I need to think about this again. Okay, so I wrote my answer for this blue term here, and I'm ready to move on to this green term here. I've moved my answer for the green term here underneath the term outlined in green. Moving on to the yellow term, I have my minus 2 over pi squared. I'm plugging in my 3 pi over 2 for t, my minus 3 pi over 2, the n, the cosine n, 3 pi over 2, plus 1 over n squared, sine n, 3 pi over 2. And now I plug in my minus uh, pi over 2, or you know, minus and then plug in pi over 2. So I get, I still have this out here, but my minus, and then I have a negative, so it's a plus pi over 2n cosine n pi over 2, and then my minus 1 over n squared, that should be a minus sine n pi over 2, and I'm going to change this to a minus. I changed my negative sign here. So the next thing I'm going to look at are my two cosine terms over here. So I have my minus 2 pi squared, my minus 3 pi 2n cosine n 3 pi over 2 plus pi over 2n cosine n pi over 2. And then here, just kind of simplifying my coefficient, I have a positive 3. The pi's cancel out, the 2's cancel out, but I have 1 pi left in n cosine n 3 pi over 2. Simplifying this coefficient, the 2 cancels out, one of the pi's cancel out, so I have minus 1 over 2 pi n cosine n pi over 2. Combining my sine terms, these two sine terms now, I'm going to get my minus 2 pi squared, my 1 over n squared sine n 3 pi over 2, minus 1 over n squared sine n pi over 2. Working with my coefficients, um, nothing cancels here, so minus 2 pi squared n squared sine n 3 pi over 2. Over here, nothing cancels there, but I have my two negatives give me a plus, 2 over n squared 
pi squared sine and pi over 2. And I make my notes here, my cosine terms here, my sine terms here. It's getting cluttered, but it's going to clear up soon. I'm going to start grouping my terms for b sub m. So this sine here will combine with this sine. So I'm going to get 6 n squared pi squared sine n pi over 2. These two cosines will cancel out since this is a minus 2 pi n cosine n pi over 2. And this is a positive 2 over pi n cosine n pi over 2. These two here will combine. They're both the 3n pi cosine n 3 pi over 2 subtracting the minus 2 over pi n. So I'm left with 1 over n pi cosine n 3 pi over 2. And then what else is there? I still have this term here, my minus 1 over n pi cosine n pi over 2. And I still have this term, minus 2 over pi squared n squared sine n 3 pi over 2. So somehow I need to get, well, these are, um, these are close. I need to relate my cosine of 3 pi over 2 to pi over 2, as well as my sine of 3 pi over 2 to pi over 2. So what has happened in each of these for the cosines? I've shifted the cosine over by pi. Is that right? Yes. And over here, my sine has shifted over by pi. So what I've done is I have my cosine and sine graph here, cosine in black, sine in blue. Then I took my sine wave here and I shifted it over by pi. That's this green wave. And what you can see is the sum of my, well, essentially I just inverted my sine wave when I shifted over by pi. So in other words, this sine is shifted over, as this sine wave shifted over by pi. And sine of n 3 pi over 2 is equal to negative sine of n pi over 2. Similarly for cosine, when you shift it over pi, you're just going to get the negative. So you're going to have cosine of 3 pi over 2 is equal to negative cosine of n pi over 2. And that's going to help us a lot. That'll allow us to combine this term with this term here, and these two terms will cancel. So finally, what I'm going to get is b sub m is equal to, since this now is negative sine of n pi over 2, is going, and then I have this negative sine in front, this will add. So I have 8 over n squared pi squared sine n pi over 2. And as I said, these two terms will cancel out, and this is my final answer. Our next example is the periodic square, square wave. So f s for square of t is equal to 1 for t between 0 and pi, and negative 1 for t between pi and 2 pi. So this is the graph, and you can see the period is equal to 2 pi, which means wn is going to be equal to n. Because this is an odd function, and you can see that here, um, our a naught and our am is equal to 0. Since cosine is an even function, we will need no cosine terms. Our formula for bm, I've written down here and plugged in 2 over t naught. 2 is 2 pi, so we have 1 over pi. The integral from 0 to pi of 1 times sine of nt plus 1 over pi, the integral from pi to 2 pi, then we have a negative 1 sine of nt. Integrating now, we have 1 over pi. Um, to go from sine to cosine, we need a negative and we need to divide by n. So negative 1 over n cosine of nt evaluated of pi and 0. We have our 1 over pi plus 1 over pi. Uh, to go from sine to cosine, we need a negative and we need an n. The negative's already here, so we just have 1 over n cosine nt evaluated at pi and 2 pi. Plugging in now, uh, here we have our minus 1 over pi n cosine of n pi minus cosine of 0 plus 1 over pi n cosine of n 2 pi minus cosine of n pi. Combining our 2 cosine of n pi, so we get minus 2 over pi n cosine of n pi, plus this is a 1, cos or yeah, the plus because of two negatives, plus 1 over n pi, 
plus and then 1 over n pi cosine of 2 n pi. That will give us 4 over n pi if n is odd and 0 if n is even. Here is the convergence of the sine wave illustrated. So if we only used one waveform, n equals 1, so in other words our frequency is 1, so we just used sine of t. Well, here's our sine wave, and this is what we would be approximating our square wave with now. Now, if we use three sine waves, where n is equal to 1, 2, and 3, so frequencies are equal to, we have a sine of t, sine of 2t, and a sine of 3t over here. When we add them together with our coefficients, we're going to get this wave here. You can see it's starting to draw the little square shapes a little bit. Over here is what happens when we use five sine waves. So we have sine of t, sine of 2t, sine of 3t, 4t, 5t. And you can see we have an even better square wave. One thing you'll notice is these higher frequencies. So it takes more higher frequencies because there's a sharp edge. And our sines and cosines are not sharply edged. So we need more higher frequencies to make that turn. Also, this tendency as we come up, we tend to overshoot on our edges, so our, where our function is not continuous or where it kind of makes this sharp turn, we tend to overshoot and we kind of have this little bit of ring and then we come back down before we settle down. This is called the Gibbs phenomena. At this point, we've finished all of our material, except that I said I would do a proof of the orthogonal conditions as well as a proof of one of these formulas. So if you um, have had enough, I guess this is a good place to stop, but it is good to see these proofs if you have some time. The proof of our orthogonal conditions, I'm only going to do this cosine one here. The other ones, I'll leave it to your imagination. So here I'm going to prove for t naught to t naught plus our period, cosine of 2 pi n over our period times t, cosine of 2 pi m of our period over t uh, times t. Since we have cosines of two different uh, angles, I'm going to use my half angle formula and convert this to one half, and then I have cosine of our angles subtracted, so 2 pi n minus m over t naught over t plus and now I'm going to have my cosine where I add my two angles, 2 pi n plus m over t naught t. Our first case, if m equals n, this becomes 0 here, and this becomes, well, just for the sake of argument, say that m is equal to n, so we're just going to use n. So this becomes 4 pi n over t naught. Here I've integrated, since this is 1, I get my my one-half comes here, I have my t, my limits of integration, my cosine becomes a sine, and then of course I have to multiply by the reciprocal, t naught, 4 pi n, and then my one-half. I plug in, and I plug in over here, and I get t naught over 2. This t naught over 2 is exactly what we have when m equals n, our Kronecker delta is equal to 1, times t naught over 2. Now we need to cover the case when m does not equal n. So I have my 1 half, and then I integrate my cosine of 2 pi n minus m over t naught. So I need to have my t naught over 2 pi over here, and then my 1 over n minus m sine of 2 pi n minus m over t naught times t. Similarly, I integrate this term and I get my 1 over n plus m sine of 2 pi n plus m t naught over t, and I evaluate at t naught plus t and t naught. I did use the fact that t naught plus t, or the sine of t naught plus t, is equal to t naught over here, and the rest is algebra, and you'll see that that's equal to 0, which, again, agrees with the formula we have here, our Kronecker delta for m not equal to n will give us 0, which is what we have. Next, I wanted to derive one of the formulas, this one here, I think the sine, cosine one, for evaluating coefficients. 
Here I have some notes, our orthogonal conditions, as well as the formula for our Fourier transform and the formulas for our coefficients. And we are going to derive the formula for one of the coefficients. We're going to look at AM, the coefficients for the cosine. I started out by moving my f of t in terms of my Fourier series, and that looks like a naught over 2 plus my summation of a number of cosine uh, terms plus my summation of sine terms. I'm going to multiply both sides of these equations by cosine of wm of t, omega m of t, and I chose omega m of t to correspond with my am coefficient. So if I wanted the second coefficient, I would multiply by my second frequency. So here I have cosine wm of t, and then I multiply everything here as well by cosine wm of t. So cosine wm of t times my a0 over 2, my cosine wm of t times my cosine of wn of t, and these are the n's that are in this summation, and then my cosine wt times my sine of wn of t, oh, times my bn over here. And then I integrate both sides, so I kind of did the two steps together. I multiplied everything by cosine wm of t as well as the integration. And what we know from orthogonality, all our bn's are going to be zero because here we have cosine times a sine, and these are orthogonal, and from orthogonality we know this will go to zero. And then also, for all the an's, if m does not equal to n over here, they will also go to zero. So what we are going to be left with is we're going to have, and here I saved some space by not putting the limits of integration, but I'm going to add them now because my series is much smaller. So I'm going to have my integral from t naught to t naught plus t, f of t cosine omega m of t, that's this um, left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, all that I'm going to have left is my am integral from t naught, t naught to t, of my cosine squared omega m of t dt. Remember, this goes to zero. The only things that are left here is when m is equal to n, which is why I have cosine squared omega m of t. Next, to integrate, I'm going to use my half-angle formula. Are these called the half-angle formulas? I think so. So integrating this side, the right-hand side of the equation, I have am, my integral, one-half, my omega plus cosine 2 omega t dt, which gives me one-half am omega t minus 1 over 2 omega m sine of 2 omega m t evaluated at my limits of integration. You can plug in limits of integration, and finally you're going to get am t naught over 2, which means solving for am, am is going to equal to, this whole equation, right, was equal to this left-hand side um, times 2 over t naught. So 2 over t naught times the left-hand side, that's the integral cosine omega m t times f of t, and that's the formula we have up here. To review what we've gone over in this video, we talked about sines and cosine series. The idea was we want to represent some function, s of t, as a linear combination of cosines and sines of different frequencies. We defined the frequency omega n as 2 pi n over the period t, and t is the smallest value such that s of t is equal to s t plus t naught for every t. Typically, we're given a particular function f of t, and we want to determine our period, and a n and b n, the coefficients here of our sine and cosines, so that the series is equal to f of t for all t. For this to be possible, f of t must be periodic and exist for all t, and then we'll have f of t equals f of t plus our period. If f of t is not periodic, we can make the series equal to f of t over some finite interval. 
the orthogonal conditions we have. So we can think of these sines and cosines of different frequencies as a basis for periodic functions. And as it's actually an orthogonal basis, and as an orthogonal basis, when we take their inner products, and for functions, inner products is to take the integral of the two functions dotted together. So when we take the inner products, then if the bases are different, bases vectors, we get a zero. If the bases are the same, so m is equal to n, so they have the same frequency, then we get a one. If they're different, we get a zero. And it's same for cosine. We use these orthogonal conditions to, to derive a formula for evaluating the coefficients here. So f of t, again, is equal to a naught over two plus a series of cosine functions and a series of sine functions and we have the formula a naught is equal to 2 over our period, our integral f of t, our a sub m, those are our coefficients for our cosine um, terms, is equal to 2 over t naught, our integral cosine of omega m of t. This omega m, this uh, frequency here, corresponds to the mth uh, coefficient times f of t. Our b sub m is equal to 2 over our period, our integral sine of omega n, this should be an m, which corresponds to our mth coefficient, f of t. And I really did want to, uh, on that triangle wave, I really did want to calculate the coefficient for a sub m, but I had so much trouble with the b sub m because I kept making stupid algebraic mistakes. It was horrible. Anyway, I hope you have better luck than I did. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.